The foot is in it now. Eden and Cole shifted their eyes from one dirty face to another, neither willing to look into a pair of the dark pupils for long. Peering out between manes of frizzy hair and beards were grim wrinkled expressions. Each gave the impression that it had been some time since it had resembled anything else. In their hands, each held their own unique weapon. Another lurked a few steps outside the imprisoning semicircle. He did not carry his weapon, but instead had an ornate stone-headed hammer strapped into his belt. At the bottom of the hammer's handle was a golden bear's head. Its shining teeth were sharpened to needle points. The bear's elegant and long face gradually merged into the handle. Spiralling around the golden handle was the smoothest black leather. Whoever had hand wound the leather around the polished gold did not make it flush, leaving a continuous golden strip coiling up the handle. The head had been carefully carved from stone. The rock used was a startling white marble with powerful black lines and the occasional glittering golden vein. Each stone facet had large inlays and bore an intricate runic inscription. The bearer had a different presence to his companions. While their armour had been fashioned from chainmail and was matted by filth, his shining armour was composed of small gleaming plates. Here and there, the same peculiar text as the hammer had been delicately chiselled into the metal plates. Over each shoulder was an arching piece of metal that curved to his muscle. He had glorious fiery hair and beard. Its colour and brightness made the most incredible shade of orange that it almost glowed. His beard grew bushy, but not messy. It forked and braided. The two strands narrowed until each entered the mouth of a sculpted golden bear head and exited the other side of the metal through another, where both prongs of the beard had a knot to prevent the metal rings falling off. His hair twined into a coarse ponytail that trailed the lower part of his back where there was another golden twin-haired bear head ring. He made a hand gesture and the others retracted their weapon slightly. I think he wants us to get up. Slowly the creators gathered to their feet and stared down at their captors. As Ed and eyes darted from one to another, he was surprised to discover that not one of them came higher than his chest. Two of the dwarves stepped forward to Eden and Cole and bound their hands. One grunted at Cole and shoved a weapon in his back. The dwarf nudged him again, urging him forward. Eden turned around in time to see the creature behind him pulling his axe back, readying himself to strike him with the butt of the handle. Eden hurriedly followed Cole to avoid the blow. The craters were hustled and hurried along the base of the cliff face where they had spent the night. The steep scree slope they were on travelled right down to the water. Cole couldn't see what wonders hid above them over the cliff, but out in front of him was a mountain range which continued as far as the eye could see. Its vastness was only equalled by the water. Both raced off into the distance, fading into nothingness. The mountains soared into the sky and far out into the distance, with the sea clinging to their bases. For the remainder of the journey underneath the cliff, Cole stared, fascinated by the seamlessly endless landscape. Eventually, they reached the end of the slope. Cole took a long look back at where they had come from. Sharp, rocky walls encased them. It appeared that the only way they could go was back the way they came. Cole spotted a steep, narrow path that snaked up a cliff face and disappeared out of sight. A dwarf came to him and grabbed his hands. The knots were undone and the rope fell away and they started to climb. They had to move in single file and most of the time the craters clung to the rock face, fearful of falling. The dwarves ascended with sure feet. The craters climbed for as long as they could but eventually they collapsed into a small plateau. Two of the dwarves drew their weapons to intimidate Cole and Eden to their feet, but the bearer of the hammer grunted and they backed off and granted them rest. The leader approached Cole and Eden and pulled two strips of meat from a pouch in his belt. The creators took the offering and nodded in thanks. 
Cole Ned and sat in silence, with their backs against a mountain. Occasionally one would tear a chunk off the tough hide and gnaw at the salty meat. Although they had spent all morning climbing the mountain pass, they didn't feel like they were much higher. All that lay above them were daunting, seamlessly unattainable peaks. The vast water was no longer in sight. They had wound so much in and out of canyons and up slopes so that it was now obscured by a forest of stone. Streams trickled down from the plateaus above and joined others in the valleys to form rivers that wound around the mountains in search of the ocean. What do you think they'll do with us? asked Eden, concerned. Well, if two of those things washed up on the shores of Crank, what do you think Arborella would do with them? She'd have her tools out fast that you could say autopsy. Eden screwed up his face. Surely not that bad. Perhaps not, said Cole, and looked at the ginger dwarf despairingly. Hopefully. How much further do you think we have to go? asked Eden, getting up. Go where? We don't even know where they're taking us, said Cole. He also got to his feet, holding on to the rock for security, and followed the dwarf in front. The sun was in the process of saying goodbye for another day, and as it enjoyed the stroll across the skyline, the crater's stops had become longer and more frequent. The group came to a cave and the craters gratefully flopped onto the floor at its mouth. Three of the dwarves disappeared into the darkness. When they returned, one was carrying a skull of a large animal. The leader barked his commands. Four set up a perimeter guarding the cave mouth. A fifth disappeared out the cave. The remaining five hustled the craters to the deepest and darkest section of the cave. In the darkness, the craters could see nothing. Strain their eyes as they might. A hand grasped Cole's wrist and pulled him down. Initially he fought it, but he was tired and allowed himself to be lowered. The second of a pair rested on Cole's back as he lay down. The hands moved away and vanished back into the darkness. At the cave mouth, the leader stood. His foot on a rock, one hand cupped a fist behind his back as his great beard blew in the wind. He gazed out over the mountains. The moon Endos hung in the sky, illuminating the rugged peaks. Time wore on, but still the dwarf's patience would not diminish. He closed his eyes to the black and silver mountain range, waiting for a sign in the silent night. The lone dwarf who had left the cave positioned himself higher up the mountain and was the first to spot the attackers. They raced towards him on all fours, like cave bats. Every time a limb moved from one rock to another, the exaggerated claws at the ends of the long, disproportionate fingers and toes extracted into the digit and stretched out again as the fingers and toes curled around a new hold. Their feet were flexible and their toes spread in a wide arc. Their arms were wiry but strong. Their bodies were sickly thin and short. Their back permanently bent as their spine poked at their skin. Ears fixed sharply behind their head and morphed into jagged points. Their cheeks were thin and bony. Their hooked nose pointed out between terrifying yellow eyes. Yellow spheres riddled with thin angry red veins. Thin black slits ran from top to bottom of the horrific globes. Their mouths were full of teeth and many stuck out because their jaws were too small to close around them. Their lips fixed in permanent grooves where their teeth rested. The axe wielder slid back down the mountain and told his commander what he had seen. The ginger dwarf nodded and lined up his troop. The first enemy entered the cave and in a flash he brought up his hammer in a swift uppercut, sending the creature crunching into the roof. All dwarves were needed to cover the mouth, each breathless as they stood, slaying goblin after goblin. With no one supervising their movement, the crater slowly gathered to their feet using the sides of the cave for support. They moved around the bend towards the cave mouth and the sound of battle. Each with a hand caressing a wall, they saw the moon's dull light splashing against the cave walls as they negotiated the crook of the cave. The light was splintered by shadows and the swift movement of fighting echoed throughout. The shadows at the bottom of the scene flickered briefly in the moonlight before being engulfed by more shadow. 
At the tops of the shadows, heads and limbs and weapons flashed above the mass of darkness. Slowly, Eden and Cole crept further around the corner, searching for opportunities and wondering at the likelihood of escape. These thoughts vaporized when they saw what their captors were fighting. The vicious creatures slashed their imposing claws, occasionally finding their mark and snapping their jaws at exposed skin. Eden and Cole looked at the villains with equal mixture of fear and disgust. Wordlessly, they agreed that as long as the armoured defenders were between them and the yellow-eyed attackers, that was alright by them. The fight raged on, the verdant horde slowly decreasing in live members, but their advantage in numbers remained. The battle had been raging for much of the night, and it was showing in all eleven dwarves. Swinging his axe in a mighty arc, the axe bearer slaughtered many creatures in an instant, but one of the greenskins behind sprung forward and sunk its teeth through his leather and into his arm. The dwarf roared in anger. He quickly killed and dislodged the creature, while his comrades did their best to protect him. He slid his hand up the long axe handle, raised the weapon and cut his arm off at the elbow. Forearm and hand fell to the ground. He grimaced down at it in distaste before carrying on in the fight. The creator stared open-mouthed at the oozing limb. Within, a vile opaque mixture mixed with the red, and together they leaped across the uneven stone. It was intoxicating, and Cole told himself to look away. The armoured defenders had finally held off the goblins long enough to convince them to seek an easier target, and the attackers retreated into the night. One goblin swung into the cave from above. The yellow-eyed fiend landed behind the creator's captors and protectors. A couple of the dwarves turned and wildly swiped out their weapons at it, tripping over each other in the process, but the goblin was already bounding towards the creators. Cole turned to flee to the back of the cave. Eden stood his ground. He stepped away from the wall to the middle of the cave, staring down the creature and hyperventilating. The goblin lunged for his chest. Eden looked at the wide, gaping mouth, its elongated teeth. The creature drifted through the air, spitting vile saliva at him. Swiftly, Eden's right foot shot out at the goblin and struck it in the jaw. Cracking against the roof of the cave, the goblin was briefly stunned, landing on its back. Its eyes were dazed for a moment before it focused on Eden. It glared and hissed at him. Eden took a step back as the goblin tried to struggle to its feet, only to have a spear driven into its skull. The bearer yanked it out. Eden looked down at the dwarves warily, fearing what was about to happen, but the ginger dwarf slapped him on the back and broke into a hearty chuckle. The rest of them followed suit and Eden returned an awkward smile. The dwarves gathered around Eden, presumably to offer their praise. Cole stood alone in the dark.